So for the next part, um, we want to set up the symbols we're going to need for the DAO strategy and for the hedge strategy. For that, uh, we have to create um, actually only one symbol, but the symbol is for the DAO. Um, which data we're actually going to need. Um, for the DAO, we need the 30 tickers. And then for the other strategy, we need SPY and TLT, basically for um, benchmark purposes. Uh, DIA, which is uh, the DAO ETF, um, and then gold for the, the other strategy. Uh, probably the question will come where to get the um, DAO tickers. There are many places um, here, an easy example, uh, just um, if you look at CNN, you can get the uh, updated list, um, grab this list um, into Excel, um, and then manipulate it because what we are going to need um, is basically a list which looks like this. We need a text file in CSV format. This is very important, so you have to save it as a uh, CSV um, extension. And then we need a list of all the different tickers, each ticker in a new line, so we don't need any uh, comma or other separators. We just need a straight list. Once you have that list, um, just save it somewhere, um, and uh, I'm going to show you how to import it into um, Quantrader. For the other tickers, as I just said, um, the only one we um, actually need is the DIA. Um, so we we'll keep that in mind, and now we go back into Quantrader. To set up symbols um, in the setup tools, We go first into the symbol manager. Once you're on the symbol manager, um, here you can modify symbols you already have imported, but you can also create new ones. Um, just to show you how this looks like, I'm going to open uh, the spy. So here you can see um, how this uh, looks like, what we need uh, for the data. A symbol name, full symbol name, um, which is only for information purposes. Uh, we need the description of that, which you can um, copy or write um, by hand. And then we have the ability to set certain flags. Um, for example, you can say use close, which means um, we're not going to use and, or ignore the uh, intraday data and always use the close price. You can select uh, currencies. Uh, this is an advanced topic we're going to cover later. In the category, um, also here, this is just for information purposes for your own mind. Um, you can set up trading costs um, as a percentage of the the price of, for example, if you would set um, 0.1, then this would um, consider a trading cost of 0.1% um, of the last price whenever you execute or you run the, um, the benchmark, the uh, backtest. Historical data provider. This might be useful for certain tickers. Um, there's no um, information available, for example, at Tingo. Then as a backup, you can go to Google or Yahoo. Um, but again, normally this would stay at default. So um, we need now to create the ticker DIA. Um, for that, just click New Symbol. Input the ticker symbol and then a short description. Here in this case, I just put in manually Dow Jones. Um, currency that stays in dollars, common ETF, trading cost, I leave it in zero, historical data provider default. And then the only thing left is to click save symbol. You can see now. Um, that the symbol or the information is loaded from our FTP server. Once the data is loaded, um, you can consult the ticker um, in the list. 
and uh, you see the description, all the information. If uh, for any reason uh, you, um, you type something wrong, you can still uh, modify it um, and then say save symbol. You also have the option to delete the current symbol for that. It is useful to see the cross-reference list, uh, which basically shows you all the strategies where the symbol is used. In this case, um, there is none. And uh, you also have the option to check all symbols which are unused, which means which are not linked to any strategy. This is just for housekeeping purposes to keep your list um, short um, so that they don't waste any time when downloading the ticker. And finally, um, what we're going to do now, you quit and come back to the backtesting window. And uh, the other thing we need now is uh, the um, symbol list, which means a list with all the DAO um, components. For that, um, we go into Setup Tools, Stock List Manager. Um, also here you can edit um, all the different stock lists. We normally have uh, a couple of them um, uh, to choose from. Um, you can then see which are the components you have available already um, to create a stock list. Um, you can also set uh, currency, uh, the category again, trading cost for a certain stock list. Um, and whatever you want to put into your stock list um, should be in that window here. Um, so all the different components. You can set it manually, but in our case, we just want to uh, import them. Oh, and yes, of course, we have um, also here the cross-reference um, where the um, stock list is used. What we want to do now is create a new list. <clears throat> we just call it our. Currency is dollars. Um, this is common ETF. Um, we don't put any trading cost in. And now I would have the option to select uh, individual, individual tickers, which we already have um, here in our uh, ticker list. But in this case, now I want to import uh, the list, which is very useful if you have, um, for example, DAO, NASDAQ, um, or other longer list of tickers. For that, just click Import. And now I'm going to scroll down to the CSV file we had created um, before. Um, again, the CSV list should look like this here. Just um, a CSV with all the tickers um, in a new line and no separator, no um, nothing else. So we use the list. And now it's going to import the different tickers. It's also loading the data from the default um, data provider. As uh, this is going to take a while, um, I'm just um, going to come back when the list is loaded. Once the data is loaded, the newly created list um, shows up here in this uh, Dropbox, Dow Jones. And you can see we have all different tickers in now. Um, Maybe here also a word why we use um, stock lists and we do not use uh, the individual um, components as a classical symbol. Um, when you use uh, index data like the DAO, NASDAQ, Biotech or others, um, probably the tickers will change from time to time. So then um, instead of uh, updating the strategy itself, you just have to update the stock list um, add or delete um, some tickers, and then the strategy itself will pick up the list and everything will continue uh, working without too many manual work. Um, so that's quite useful. On the other hand, um, a downside when working with the stock list is um, when you're setting up a strategy, as we will do in the next step, um, you sometimes want to change parameters on a ticker base. Um, so set a certain parameter for one individual ticker. And this is not possible if you use a stock list and you can only apply parameters to the whole list. Um, so sometimes you might uh, even want to set up all tickers individually. But again, for the time uh, being, um, for that list here we use, or for the strategy, we use the stock list.
now the uh, stock list is safe um, so we quit and then come back to the um, backtesting window 